Il, il prossimo ospite è um, Mr. Morrissey, che sarà presto qui sul palco. Eh, è stata una, una scoperta per, per molti. Io sono stato molto affascinato eh, del, del, suo, del suo prodotto e del modo in cui eh, era nel, della ricerca che avevano fatto. L'ho voluto fortemente a questa sessione di BTO, è un piacere averlo qui sul palco, sarà intervistato e condotto da Laura Valerio di Espedia. Laura Valerio e Morris Sim, grazie. Innanzitutto buongiorno eh, a tutti. E, mh, eh, nella, nella passata edizione eh, del BTO, Uh, molti dei presentatori, non so se uh, molti di voi erano presenti a, a quell'edizione, ma si ricorderanno che uh, hanno affrontato uh, l'argomento del viaggiatore, ossia come è cambiata l'attitudine del viaggiatore negli ultimi anni, specialmente uh, pensando che uh, da un atteggiamento passivo si è passati ad un atteggiamento più che attivo eh, di questi viaggiatori che amano condividere le esperienze del proprio viaggio attraverso commenti piuttosto che fotografie, filmati eh, che pubblicano online su vari siti, dai blog eh, al, ai tour operator online eccetera eccetera. E parlavamo anche eh, dell'importanza proprio per l'albergatore di monitorare sempre di più che, quelle che sono le opinioni dei viaggiatori, cioè che cosa eh, il viaggiatore che ha soggiornato presso la mia struttura dice di me, eh, soprattutto perché dalle opinioni dei viaggiatori si può imparare molto e quindi sottolineavamo come fosse importante per l'albergatore reagire anche a questo tipo di eh, informazioni e utilizzare al meglio le informazioni che arrivano direttamente dai, dai clienti. Uh, Quest'anno facciamo un passo in avanti e uh, ad esempio la, la domanda che ci si pone, ok adesso ho tutte queste informazioni, il cliente arriva nel mio hotel, dice che cosa ne pensa, ma come faccio ad utilizzare queste informazioni che sono date da commenti, gallerie fotografiche, immagini per migliorare l'esperienza del, del mio cliente, come faccio ad aumentare la loyalty e quindi come faccio ad aumentare le vendite eh, nella mia struttura sfruttando tutta questa serie di informazioni che posso facilmente trovare online. Bene, una risposta o molte risposte alle nostre domande le troviamo proprio nella presentazione che eh, adesso ci farà Morris Sim, cofondatore e CEO di Circus Brand Karma. Great. Thank you for that introduction. I don't understand Italian, but buongiorno everyone. Um, my, um, this is actually my second time uh, in Florence. The first time I was here, i, uh, I did a lot of things that, uh, you know, the obvious thing that tourists would do. I went to see the museums and the churches. I ate a lot of gelatos and uh, steak florentine. And, you know, in general, I had a really good time. But yesterday, as a part of my uh, second trip to, uh, to Firenze, I decided to take a walk up into the hills of Tuscany. And I saw Firenze from a totally different perspective. Um, that gave me a much greater appreciation for the beauty of this city and why um, people have such a really, you know, great attraction towards it. And while I was up there in the hills, uh, it inspired me um, to think about the talk uh, today in that most of you in the room probably understand something about social media and social networks. And, you know, you probably have done some um, trying or experiences on the different social networking sites and in, in terms of trying to understand what social media is all about. What I'm hoping to do today is much like the walk that I did yesterday, is to give you a different perspective on social media and social networking that will hopefully uh, explain to you why it's relevant to your business, not only today, but in years to come. So to start our journey, what, um, what we'll do is take a little bit of distance away from hospitality and from Italy and really look at Um, the web overall. This here is a listing, according to Alexa, of the tw top 20 websites worldwide. 
And as you will see, eight out of the top 20 websites uh, worldwide today are completely powered by user-generated content. They include sites such as Facebook, YouTube, Wikipedia, Twitter, MySpace, so on and so forth. This is an incredible uh, advancement really in the last two to three years. Had we looked at this list, let's say, back in 2004, 2005, it would be very, very, very different in that none of the social media sites would actually be even anywhere close to the top 20. In fact, Twitter, a year ago, was nowhere near in the top 20 at all. So this goes to show you how the landscape of the web traffic has changed very rapidly in the last uh, 24 months or so. Now let's drill down a little bit deeper and look at the numbers behind some of these user-generated sites. If you look here, Flickr, which is a photo sharing site um, that is accessed um, by many people worldwide, 4 billion photos um, on uh, Flickr today. YouTube serving 1 billion videos uh, per day, over 100 million videos on the, on the site. In fact, if you were to watch the uh, YouTube videos, every single YouTube videos um, that um, are available, it would take you 435 years of um, human years to be able to watch those videos. And of course, in the meantime, there would be more videos uploaded. So in effect, it's impossible. Wikipedia, 14 million articles in 269 languages. Twitter, 45 million visitors, half of which are actually non United States oriented. And Facebook, look at the Facebook story. In the last 12 months, it is now the second most popular website in the world with over 325 million people. Effectively, it's the third largest country in the world behind China and India, you know, when you think about Facebook. And uh, you know, there's a lot of content that are being shared on Facebook whose sole purpose is for friends to communicate with each other. This is an incredible achievement um, you know, when you think about Facebook. And one of the things that we always recommend to our clients uh, who are starting to think about social media and social networks is to really consider Facebook as the largest customer relationship management database in the entire world. If you think about it, the potential of Facebook in terms of the data that it has about you, your friends, your activities, makes it really an incredible CRM tool um, if you're able to tap into that and get access to that information. And we'll talk a little bit about how to do that later on in the presentation. Now, we're going to drill down a little bit, now down specifically to um, Italy, and um, why social media really does matter to the Italian tourism industry here. If you take a look at the inbound travelers um, to Italy, Italy is the world's fourth most popular destination. Um, and when we look at the, uh, the source of the travelers that are coming into Italy in terms of the countries where the inbound travelers are coming from, um, according to the... Uh, the Italian, tourist, st Italian State Tourist Board, uh, they would basically rank in the following Germany, the United States, the United Kingdom, France, Spain, Austria, Netherlands, Switzerland, Japan, and Russia. For all of you that are hotel owners and operator, tour operators in here, I don't think that the, the list of countries that are listed up there should be any surprise for you. But what's incredibly amazing is when you look at just the two most popular user-generated content sites on the web today, Facebook and YouTube, and you look at how popular, how popular they are in each of those 10 countries. This gives you an idea for the fact that your inbound travelers coming into Italy are using social network and social media on Facebook and on YouTube to effectively determine what they're going to be doing while they're in Italy, what to expect, where to go, where to stay, and what constitute a really, really great experience. 